So here we are on a Monday afternoon, and uh, I know that both of our viewers are hungry for our words because we, I think we missed out today, did we, Pat? We yes. Missed last Friday? Yes, COVID came a calling to my household last week, so. Uh-huh. Yeah, you, so... you, you, you had to have a, a cool hand uh, uh, ministry. Yeah, a, a cooling hand, yes. Uh, so, mm. uh, uh, we decided we'd skip it for, uh-huh. for Valor. <laughs> well, as you know what they say, hunger is good sauce, Pat. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so what is rare is much admired. So now, dear uh, listeners, dear viewers, both of you, you're about to get a whole half hour of us. Okay, yeah. right. right. Let's start off with something. Actually, I watched all of this. You're talking about Quinn Country, Pat. Yeah. You mentioned it. That series went out three nights in succession on yeah. RTE. And of course, it was about Sean Quinn, the yeah. hugely rich, or at one stage anyway, hugely rich, the richest man in Ireland. Um, and his rise and, and his fall. Um, what was your impression of it? First of all, did you, did you, in a broad sense, enjoy the programmes? Did you think... Dude, uh, like, uh, COVID interrupted him. Uh, I saw the one on Tuesday. I didn't see the one on Wednesday, the one that's really raised the controversy. But mm. I have long held a view that while I certainly don't think Quinn is blameless for what happened, far from it, but I do have a distinct impression that he was treated very differently by the political media and legal establishment in the South because he was not one of them. He was a bit of an outlier. He was what f- left school at 15 from a strongly nationalist GA background in the North. Uh, he didn't, he didn't join the sailing clubs and the yacht clubs and the golf clubs. And he uh, uh, maybe behind all a bit of a rough diamond and, and all the rest of it, but um, he was a definitely a man of ability. And when I watched the coverage and I, I saw some of the comments, uh, like there are certain people, bankers, who absolutely destroyed our economy and they are still moving in the right circles. Sean mm-hmm. Quinn is almost uh, satanic uh, if you read some of the stuff. And yet I have never bought that. Here's a man, dude, I'm rat- ranting on a wee bit here, but here's a man uh, did more for that Fermanagh, Cavan area than any government, any politician. He created, at one stage, he had about 8,000 people employed. And you will not find anybody in that area who has a bad word to say about him. Mm-hmm. And they, those are his people. And yeah. those are the people in, who know him best. Instead yeah. of a sort of a, sort of Trinity College set that runs around Dublin who don't seem to do anything. So well, I, you're I, am, I, I am... Sorry, not, go ahead, Pat. I, no, I, I think, I, I'm, as I said, I started off saying that Jody's not blameless, but if you're giving me a choice between Sean Conan and the bankers, I'll take Sean Conan any day. <laughs> well, I confess I'm the same way. I sort of instinctively line up with the person who's the Kulshi and the guy who's a northerner uh, as well. I think it's illogical of me, but it, that's just the way I am. I, I, I instinctively right. side with the guy, even though he's hugely wealthy or was, I still side with the guy who's from the country and the guy who's from the north, or more yeah. or less the north. Um, I think, as you say, there are lots of um, shysters who got off scot-free or got off yeah. with a light, you know, uh, tap on the knuckles. Uh, yeah. And that uh, Satan incarnate is the line that they're taking with Sean Quinn, because, yeah. in part because he's not one of the Dublin set. But at the same time, although there are a bunch of shysters who got off of scot free, we're talking about Sean Quinn here, and I think we yeah. should should it, confine it and to make decisions about him. I'll tell you something, Pat. I watched all three nights yeah. the thing was on, and I'm still not clear what was the charge against Sean Quinn, and what yeah. were the facts of the matter. Now. You may say, well, you're a bit stupid, but I mean, there's lots of stupid people who watch TV. Why yeah. is it after three nights, I'm still not quite clear as to what was, what, what was wrong that Quinn did and uh, how did it happen and how much was it and so on? I, I think what happened, Jude, he used money from, he, he had his own private businesses, but the insurance company is a regulated business mm. and he took money from the business to uh, pay off other businesses. And I think that was, he broke the rules, the company law, the law of the land when he done that. So I think that is that was, and that's where he landed in the deep doo-doo. But here's the point, Jude. Uh, some years back, Rupert Murdoch was in exactly the same spot as Sean Coney. He was in deep, deep, ah, shit. Uh, financially, he was really, but the banks give him 
the option. There was a lady banker, they, I can't remember the name of the bank, but he was into them for billions. And this the, the woman who was the chief executive said, he knows his own business better than we do. He can trade out. Like, Sean Cunn was never given that opportunity. And I think they sort of overplayed the fact that some, some of the regulators, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, said he wasn't up to the job. They handed over to people like Kevin Loney and people like that who had no experience. Sean Cunn had the experience of running his own business. He said himself that at one stage they were making 500 million a year profit. He should have been allowed. OK, he made mistakes. And by the way, they could have put on somebody, sit by Nelly, uh, a legal guy, and say, Sean, you can't do this and you can't do that. But there did seem a concerted effort to get him out. Hmm. It gets complicated when you mention Kevin Lunny because uh, that was what happened to him was reported in excruciating that detail. That was disgrace. Well, it was disgraceful, dude. Absolutely dis- hmm. It was thuggish. It was brutality. Totally, totally barbaric. Hmm. And whoever done it and whoever's responsible should go to jail for it. But you see, there is the fact is, and I, I'm, I'm not saying there's any evidence for this, and Sean Quinn himself would insist this. But there is this feeling people have that Kevin Lunny got hammered. Uh, you know, he really was brutalized. Uh, and he was doing stuff that uh, Sean Quinn didn't approve of. In other words, he came in and did the work of, of taking the company out of Quinn's hole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So naturally, Quinn didn't like him. So a lot of people are making a link between the two and say, oh, no, you know. We, I will John Quinn has totally, completely and utterly denied it on the record. And I, and there's I did, all the uh, rubbish has been printed. Not one person has I know any proof. So I, I, I'm taking Sean Quinn's word on it. No, what he got the other people. What about say, the smoke and fire pot? I that dude, by the way, we're closely labeled laws, so we better be very I know careful. That, I realize uh, that. No, I, I, I am taking Sean. Sean Quinn has stood, stood it categorically. In fact, he had a big row with the priest who remember preached this. Oh, early. yes. I thought that was, I, I, I mean, I saw his wife speaking about it uh, uh, on the on the program. And I felt sorry for her. I felt sorry for her in two ways. One, she really felt that this priest that they had been nice to and she, had, she said that he had been killing. I haven't heard uh, that word used in the media for a long time. Uh, uh, she had been killing in the house. And now he, she had, he had stabbed uh, Sean and her in the back, in the back yeah. and she really would never forgive him. Uh, I can sort of understand it. Mind you, I thought she was paying a price for that. Like, I did seem to be eating into her in a terrible way. Um, yeah. And I thought Sean Quinn himself was able to manage that maybe a bit better than she yeah. was managing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I think that the key thing that wasn't emphasised was mm. Sean Quinn, as you say, but more jobs revolutionized the lives yeah. of so many people. They didn't have to go off to Dublin. They didn't well, have to go off to Birmingham. Off to England. Dude, half of those guys, that is the poorest one of the, you know, the border counties. Oh, yeah. You check out Gary Donegal for Manor Cabin. The, the immigration rates, the unemployment rate, the disposable income rates are at the lowest in Ireland. Sean Quinn changed that dramatically. Their kids got educated, could go to college, got proper jobs. But before Daddy and Mammy would maybe have considered going over to uh, somewhere in England, digging ditches or on the road, you know, Sean yeah. Quinn changed all that. But Jude, anyway, let, can I move on? The, one of the big things that came out with Alan Dukes' comment that I thought oh, was yes. unbelievable. He basically said, "Border communities, violence is unbred in them, and all that." Jude, I was thinking afterwards. Imagine Mary Lou Macdonald or any Sinn Féin, because that's what, what we're comparing here, had said that about Unionists or Protestants or someone. There would have been a media firestorm of epic proportions. Uh, Alan Jukes was allowed to sort of apologise and it all died down. Yeah. I, I thought Alan Jukes, um, <clears throat> he he epitomised that cool, um, big sense of entitlement. Um, yes, Absolutely. Uh, well coiffured, you know, nice hair, nice glasses, um, Fun stripes, and speaking with a smile on his face yeah. about these people around the border. Yeah. Whereas Quinn, there's something kind of sterile, rough about him. He's a rough diamond. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just thought it summed up really Dublin Four and, you know, so many other parts of Ireland. Uh, and, and then what he said, I thought was, I mean, it's, he actually, Pat, I wasn't shocked by it. Because he yeah. said what an awful lot of people about Dublin uh, and the area around it think about, and maybe even beyond that, think about yeah. the north and the border. Absolutely. They think there is it's it's banded country, and they yeah. are, are are pretty violent people, uh, or at least um, dangerous people. Yeah, 
Judy, see tomorrow morning. I'll just put it down to this. Say that the six counties of the northeast had not been uh, occupied by the British. Say it was the six counties of the southeast had been occupied, where the cultures and the political identities clashed. The exact same problems would have occurred down there. You know, uh, to suggest that the people living in, in, the, in the north of Ireland are different from the people in the south is absolute rubbish. Complete balderdash. Mm. But you see, they, they themselves, and by, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Alan Dukes wasn't part of this, but for decades they taught people to think that way. To yeah. think about the North as being different, separate. Yeah. And I, Pat, Pat, that's why I continually, I know it's annoying, but it's why I keep saying it's a state, not a country. When you talk about the yeah. what is called the Republic of Ireland. Yeah. The other thing that I really don't like at all, is very, I think it's actually, I believe it's subversive of nationalism to talk about Ireland when you mean the 26 counties. Yeah. Because if you say Ireland and you're not including the North, well, that, then obviously it belongs to yeah. the UK and that's it. It's the end of story. Yeah. Remember, remember RT some years back, Jude put up a map, uh, I think it was during one of the elections, a, a map of Ireland with the North uh, taken out of it. <laughs> well, that, 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 and remember when Martin McGuinness was standing for presidency, there was a debate and this girl, she says, you're not the same as us. She actually said it on air. Oh, I was going, hey, the Sunday Independent, John A. Murphy, Ruth Dudley Edwards, Owen Harris, have succeeded brilliantly. There's a total West Brunton mentality. And somebody, by the way, said to me one quite recently, Pat, you use that term a lot and it's insulting. Dude, I mean it totally. Mm -hmm. It is meant to be insulting because, you know, I am not one of the flag-waving patriots. But when you when people are uh, willing to take Britain's side of the conflict in Ireland and accept it unequivocally, you're going, are you people for real? Uh, don't forget, uh, uh, too, though, Pat, that they... Uh... It works the other way as well. There are a lot what of people mean? in the north who are uh, suspicious, and I'm not. All, they're not all unionists either, who are suspicious often, a little bit, not contemptuous, but certainly, you know, they, 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 they put them into a cliched image, you know, that they're, ah, they'd be smart, they'd be talking nice to you, but they'd be doing you with the other hand. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sort of slippery customers. Uh, yeah. That sort of stupid, bloody image has been... Uh, imbibed with some people's mother's milk up here. Yeah. Uh, and it's a terrible pity. Of course, as Mary McAleese said to me once in a private conversation, she said, what do you expect if you put a border down the middle of a country or a part of a part of a country and you have two totally different systems of education, yeah. of uh, judicial, etc. Of course, people are going to grow up different with different ways of looking at things. Absolutely. So there's another good argument for getting rid of yeah. the bloody border so we can yeah. look at each other and know the reality rather than some yeah. sort of nonsense. Yeah. OK, well, will, I, will we leave Alan Duke? Smart uh, man, but very unbelievably stupid for a smart man. That's what I was yeah. calling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, move on to the World Cup. And was that ball over the line? Um uh. You know, you I I saw that and I didn't pay much attention to it, but you clearly have looked at it very carefully. I uh, there's a photograph that I saw, it, believe it or not, on social media, and I think it was the Oxford uh, Daily Mail or uh, Evening Mail, and the ball is clearly over the line. Now, Jude, you sort of go, Graham soon as I, I was watching the match, um, I think that's why I missed the last part of the Quinn thing, by the way, as well. Uh, I was watching the match and the Jude, the, orish, the original. Um, Replay showed the ball clearly over the line, clearly over the line. Who was playing, by the way, Pat? Who was the contact? Japan and Spain. Japan and Spain. Okay. And the ball went out, the ball went out and uh, I think the Spanish guys sort of uh, clocked off for him because they thought it was out, but the Japanese guys shaked it in and then suddenly it was a goal. But I mean, the bottom bottom line of it all, Judy, I started to say, Graham Sunis pointed out, why, if they're so sure it's a goal, why did it take them an hour to show the diagram that the ball, a part of the ball was still on the line. Mm -hmm. And dude, I am still of the opinion there's something very dodgy about that decision. Now, remember the the Germans at the start, they protested about the civil rights and human rights in Qatar. And I, you sort of wonder, did FIFA or did somebody, you know, that you can go down to conspiracy theories and dude, I don't really believe it, but there's something seriously dodgy about that decision. And I would love to know what it is. Well, I saw, I looked at a couple of images of it, and you're right. And uh, the several of the images I saw, it seemed to be no doubt in my mind where the ball was. It was over the line. 
But yeah. there was one image taken from some angle, I forget what it was, above or something like that, uh, which made it look as if a tiny bit of it was maybe uh, touching the line still. Aye, but Jude, I would love to know, it took him an hour. You know, did we see, the, I would love to, uh, go and show us the full footage. You know, was the yeah. ball moved back a, back a half an inch uh, by the somebody, I don't know. Do you really believe that that was deliberate? Do you think that was to... Um, Damage Germany. I just I saw a photograph there quite recently of an American guy wearing the rainbow uh, colours on his sleeve, being removed from the audio. Uh, an American guy, and he was taken out from the stadium by the Qatari police. Dude, <laughs> you, you know, and by the way, that that's not fake. It's all you can check it out in social media. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. seen quite clearly. Uh, so, dude, I don't know. Uh, this whole idea of uh, FIFA, they were giving the World Cup so to bring the people of oh, the I, world I, together. I, 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 what yeah. a load of bollocks. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Uh, the, the, this is massive money. And there was backhanders. 14 out of the 22 FIFA guys are now either suspended, jailed or whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I think the idea of awarding it to Qatar was, was of course, corruption in action. Um, it's a bit, actually, I'll tell you what it's like. I was up in Oma and I was talking right. to some people and they were talking about the gold mining in Greencastle. Uh, yeah. This is Greencastle, County Tyrone. Uh, yeah. And they were talking about how this has um, divided people. Uh, and, you know, the question is, do you want to <clears throat> sell your field for a million pounds? Or do you want to be true yeah. to what you believe in and keep this beautiful place yeah. the way it should be instead yeah. of bringing in all the pollution and so on that mining, uh, gold mining would bring? Same thing applies to Qatar. Yeah. Qatar says, we, we'd like to host the, Olymp- the um, World Cup. And, of course, people say, oh, no. And then they said, I'm going to give you, you know, this amount of money. <laughs> yeah. And that's what changes. I mean, they gave yeah. enough money to make yeah. sure that this happened. That's I, well, I, I, got into, I got into a sort of a debate with, with members of my own family. Uh, Eamon Dunphy, you know, the, the yeah. soccer player, he was on RT, the Late Late Show, a couple of weeks back. Hmm. And he said, you no, know, David Beckham had gone down his estimation that he had taken 10 million quid from uh, the oh, wow. Qataris to promote this World Cup yeah. and so on. But as I remember my own family says, I bet you if him and had been offered 10 million to promote, oh. uh, he would probably have done the same. Yeah, yeah, maybe he would, but it doesn't change the fact. Everything yeah. Gumphy said about Qatar is, is, is true. Oh, yeah. Up to 6,000 workers, uh, migrant workers, lo- lost their lives building the stadiums. Mm-hmm. They, without question, brown envelopes were used to won votes. You know, it should never have been held in a place where there's no history, whatever, of soccer and so on. And their uh, human rights record is absolutely atrocious. Mm-hmm. You no, know, what what was the what do you think was the deciding factor in awarding <laughs> Qatar the World Cup money? Uh, well, what is the deciding factor in anything connected with the Middle East oil rich? Uh, Middle East. Uh, yeah, only. Uh, okay, but let, let's let's just move sideways a wee bit and say. Is England going to win? Of course, England is going to win the World Cup, isn't it? Oh, hey, Judy, if you listen to some <laughs> of the pundits already, it's a foregone conclusion. I don't think Mbappe, uh, who destroyed what he called him yesterday, uh, Australia, he was superb for yeah. France. Like, And they're going to have, they have serious trouble. And now Harry Maguire, who is derided by uh, some of the, the pundits, particularly Roy Keane and people like that, has been having a superb World Cup. But I think if he uh, um, Mbappe runs at Harry, uh, there'll be a, like a train and a, a, a sort of a horse and cart going for the same ball. <laughs> <laughs> How vividly you put it, Pat. Uh, uh, uh. But, but, you know, but anyway, the, I presume by, the, by Saturday, all the usual suspects will have England absolutely winning the World Cup because that's the way it is. Mm. Well, well I think they have, a quite, they, they have a quite good team. They have, they have they some have good players, have. some very yeah. good players. In fact, that Jude, I think the, man, the best man on the team is, of course, as myself, named after the patron saint of hope, hopeless cases, and that's Jude Bellingham. Yeah, I think yeah. he's a brilliant 19. player. Yeah. Only 19, that's amazing. He's so mature yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, so uh, they have, and Kane is, I mean, he is one hell of a good finisher of, a, of a, an attack. Um yeah. But in, I've been down this road before, and so have you, Pat. Ever yeah. since 1966, I've been down this road every four years where yeah. England are going to win at this time. Football's coming home, etc. And, you know, if Insanity is doing the same thing uh, mm-hmm. and expecting it to produce different results, uh, then, you know, there might be a question about national sanity in England in this uh, case. But you know, last, last night in the first 
Even Ian Wright made the point on at least two or three occasions. Senegal could have easily been two 0 up in the first oh, yeah. five minutes. He certainly you know, could. He certainly uh, could. So they're like the the. Uh, you know, a good team uh, will expose them. Senegal was a wee bit, uh, they were a wee bit naive, mm. and certain, you know, they had a lot, a lot of athleticism, uh, and they, they were very good, but yeah. they got caught out. Yeah. Okay. Here's the final question in this pack: Do you want them to win? No. <laughs> <laughs> Devastating honesty from from editor no, McCall no, once again. You, I, I like I, if you're going to ask me would I like Germany or something, not at all. I, you know, I'd rather. But you know, if, well, I like, I like Germany. I'd like to see Germany winning it. I like, uh, I like I, the style I, I, of football that Germany I, play. I love it. I, no, I love my favorite team at the minute. Watching them play is the Dutch. Geez, they were lovely footballers. I didn't see that. Now, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 the Greek tradition. I'm hoping for Argentina. Because uh, simply because Messi is in the team, yeah, yeah I just, I like to see him. Uh, uh, and it'd be lovely I, to see I, I, everybody's favorite team, without question, is Brazil. If, if it's not you, ah, uh, the 1970 yeah. World Cup to me will always be the gold standard. Oh, yeah, it's the best remember, football I've ever seen. Remember it well, it was absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Okay, let's move on to something else now. And uh, this is pretty important. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen paid a visit, uh, the EU yeah. paid a visit. In happier circumstances than the time the Troika came to town. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, uh, J- uh, J- uh, by the way, you, you mentioned someone there. Uh, apparently, we are awash with money. Uh, uh, there's something like a 12 billion surplus. Now, that, uh, for a country that uh, our size, that's for a one state. year. Uh, a state, all right. <laughs> 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 and uh, the, what, uh, the, the tax take from the big corporations is way of, it's going to be something like 21 billion this year. You know, mm-hmm. so anyway, but anyway, Ursula came last week and she uh, was given the honour of addressing the two houses of the Arachnus, Uh and she was very f- fulsome in her um, praise for the Irish and she said that we had, uh, we understood what it was like to fight for freedom and our uh, and independence and we should understand and that was why we had played such a great role in helping the Ukrainians that we had gone beyond what was asked of us and were all, all arrested. Mm. Anyway, I, I, remember, I was reading it and then I came across there was a massive reaction. If you get the Daily Express, it comes up on my social media feed. Uh, a couple of guys from the uh, ERG went absolutely, how dare she? It was uh, insulting. And Kate Hoey said, while uh, Ursula van der Leyen did not mention the IRA, how dare she? This was exact quote, how dare she claim that the uh, that uh, the fight in Ukraine against Putin was the same as IRA's fight for mm-hmm. freedom. They had murdered innocent Protestants and Catholics and mm-hmm. police force and whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Ur- Ursula von der Leyen did not mention the IRA. She just said, and she didn't mention anything. Basically, she said, uh, Ireland's fight for freedom. And it goes to show how these these people have real problems when when somebody cannot state a fact because it doesn't suit their narrative. Well, I, I, I didn't really surprise me that much, Pat. And in a way, yeah. I can sort of understand it. Kit Hoey is a dyed-in-the-wool unionist. I mean, there's yeah. no two ways about that. She's totally a unionist. And, of course, she's going to see the troubles, the recent, well, you know, the last troubles as being a bunch of uh, terrorists or psychopaths or whatever else. Uh, essentially, I think, you see, that Kit would quite like the Irish people to be, well, certainly, well, ideally, all of them, to be like the native people in places like America, Australia, New Zealand, where they sort of laid down arms and were just rolled over and smashed as a people. Uh, So uh, the fact is that the Irish people didn't, and Ursula von der Leyen pointed that out, and uh, that kind of thing hurts. However, one thing I would say is, and it brings me back, I said this about John F. Kennedy's famous visit, uh, it warms your heart to hear Ursula von der Leyen say, you know, the Irish people fought and got their independence. Well, yeah. yes and no. And you know what yeah. I mean by that? Yeah. Uh, 26 counties, yes. Six counties, no. Those are the facts of the matter. And I, yeah. think, I think it's very important that we should uh, certainly honour the people who achieved so much. And yeah. as you say, they know that you have a state which is really functioning very well even compared to some of the other countries in uh, Europe. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, um, I, I would say it's important to remember that, you know, we are a part of Ireland here. 
yeah. we are a part of Ireland. In fact, the majority of our the, our majority party up here is devoted to the idea of a united Ireland. And I always get uneasy in these occasions where, so the thing sounds good and clear and no ifs and buts and no awkward facts, where somebody comes out and says, you know, Ireland got its independence. You know, well, yeah. yes, it did, but not quite like. So yeah. there you go. That's my wee rant, Pat. You think yeah, no, I, I accept totally. But I, I think what um, what's amazing is that there's there's almost seems to be a denial by uh, the ERG that any uh, that Britain's role in this part of the world has any uh, been anything less than benign. There's almost <laughs> this sort of it's a white man's burden. Uh, the, the one of the guys in the ERG was sort of saying uh, clearly Miss Miss Van der Rijn doesn't know the history that Britain had gone out of its way to achieve peace in Ireland and all the rest of it. I was thinking, <laughs> if you if you guys hadn't been here for eight hundred years, we wouldn't need it. Jesus, come on, you know, you know, you end up uh, finding yourself almost being a bigot because when you listen to these people and you're going, wait a minute, you know, we did not invade your country. We do we do not claim part of your country. We do not have soldiers and security forces and intelligence services running around your country. We do not make rules for your country. And by the way, you know, and I don't support killing anybody. For, but go on back to your own country and let's love as good neighbours. Stop interfering in ours. Uh, well, you see, it's exactly. I I agree with you completely, Pat. What uh, you said really brings it out when you say, okay, so you say there's nothing to be seen here. Well, let's turn it around the other way. Let's say that uh, part of Yorkshire or all of Yorkshire was occupied by uh, Irish soldiers. Um, where they had Secret Service of Ireland positioned yeah. there, where laws were made which were to be abided by that were made in Dublin for I, the of Yorkshire. And, and people in Yorkshire who played cricket were uh, regarded with suspicion that <laughs> some of them was shot or uh, some of them was shot going through a checkpoint going yeah. to play cricket or yeah. whatever. See how yeah. that would go down. Aye, aye. So anyway, um, um, we just got to put off my phone there. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, as I say, that sticks in my gullet a wee bit. But um, Kid Hoey's reaction didn't surprise me. She's way, an Dr. ERG Conte, person. She's um, I, you know, well, died in the well, wilderness. Well, 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 she's gone from sort of a uh, Labour Party to uh, almost extreme hard right. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm always amazed she's not a Tory. Well, she is in real terms. Ah, you know, is, I, yeah, I, I can't. I, I don't see too many socialist views coming. Did, did you see last week there that the Russian poll said a lot of people in in the occupied part oh, of this country yeah, would yeah, not? Yeah, would yeah, not, yeah, yeah. What do you make Very of that? Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I, I'm still trying to digest it. I, I, well, I'll confess, I'm very disappointed to hear that. Uh, I, well, I'm pleased to hear that is there's a clear majority for. A uh, border poll and for Irish unity in the south. I am um, dismayed, I'd say, to hear that the figures are so low in terms of this, the number of people in the north wanting yeah. to have a border poll and a united Ireland. I suppose I console myself with the fact that uh, you know we haven't actually got down to looking at what 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 a border poll should be about and what a united Ireland should look like. So maybe that's uh, something that's. Uh, we need reminding of, and this certainly, the, the low figures in the north would make you sit back and uh, start taking stock. Would that be yeah. a reasonable interpretation? Or well, you... Jude, you, you've actually stolen my thunder because that's exactly what I was thinking. Jude, you, you know, uh, the, the, the debate really hasn't begun at all. and not it's, uh, There's a lot of talking, but until the day the two governments say right here, we are now going to have a referendum, and it's agreed referendum, and here are the hard and fast plans. Here's the roadmap for a, either union or the unity, mm. or unity, one or the other. And things maybe like an All-Ireland National Health Service, uh, an agreed a, a uni, a university a sort of situation, you know, with a cross border, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and all the different things. That, and we'll look at things like the constitutional question, maybe a, 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 a sub-parliament in Belfast, we will look at the national anthem. We will look at rejoining the Commonwealth. All these things that are part and parcel. When all those things uh, are uh, put on the table, fleshed out, detailed plans, economic plans, uh, health plans, education plans, you know, everything on the table, let's have a discussion. 
I think we could find a very different, very changed. Right now, it's say, uh, you know, if, look, if the Belfast Telegraph walked up to me and somewhere in Belfast, like a pollster, I'll say whatever they ever they want me to say just to get the hell away. So <laughs> I, like, I really, I, I really genuinely don't think it, it tells anything. Do you know what they say? Polls are great, but until the, until the votes are counted, they really don't count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's something that at the same time we do take, uh, they are they are important to keep an eye on. They do maybe yeah. show us where we've got work to do. Uh, yeah. And certainly there's work to be done there. I really am quite surprised by that, that so few uh, in the North were for it. Uh, again, this thing where people say, you see, it's like I was saying about gold mining and so on in Qatar. Uh, when it comes to money, when people say, would you like to pay, would you pay higher taxes if you're getting yeah. United Ireland? People say, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, so it's um, it's tricky. I would, uh, I, but hold on, Jude, polls come and go. There was a poll not that long ago, which suggested quite the, the, quite a few more were interested in the United Ireland. So it's changed this one. Next time it could be a different one again. So I, I wouldn't get quick. An individual poll doesn't tell me anything. But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if there ever was, I saw the lead story in the Irish Times today was about that survey that they did, that poll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, isn't it changed times? That poll was about Irish unity. Yeah. You know, yeah. five years ago, Irish unity, I mean, you bonkers. You wouldn't even, um, even be talked about. Yeah. And um, I remember <laughs> Arlene Foster saying, oh, be careful what you wish for. You yeah. know, there's none of that now. There's this, the topic is where. Many people said it should be. It should be at the center of our discussion. And that's what yeah. it is now. Yeah. And that's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, we're on a short of time, Pat. So let's see uh, if anything has changed in the world of uh, the occupied part of our country. Uh, because Re Radio Foil looks like it's going to take a hit. You're, you're yeah. up to date with exactly what that means for them. I, Judah, last week it was announced that um, uh, BBC have rejigged a whole lot of things. Now, Jude, what Radio Foil, as I, I think I've mentioned the fact in the past that Derry is not Greater Belfast, it's not part of Greater Belfast. It's a distinct, the, the northwest, is, west of the band is not the same as east of the band. Very different, different culturally, religion wise, uh, socially, economically, you know, and, and politically. And, you know, if, if people uh, in Belfast and Arma Avenue think that Nolan plays well in Derry, they should take another run to themselves. Dude, Radio Foil reflects the views of the people in the Derry area. There's a programme on in the morning, and which is the local... It's like the Late Late Show for Derry. It's, people listen to it, uh, tune in, get their news for the day, and so on. And then there's... But, uh, anyway, I'm going to cut the chase. Basically, what they're doing is most of the journalists will go. They're keeping a magazine programme in the afternoon, and Sean Coyle will be playing records from 3D4. And I presume the building uh, up, up along the Northland Road will go as well. So uh, they're really pulling out of Derry. And I I, I think it, I, it's not appreciated. That's true. On the other hand, you do have Highland Radio, which has reached right across into Derry. Yeah, and, and you, that, uh, people in Derry will not be going towards Belfast. They'll be going towards Donegal. Aye, They'll be getting aye. their news from Donegal from here on in. I would think that's very likely. It just uh, strikes me as a bit ironic because... People have talked about the value of local radio with the importance of local radio. That's yeah. in the UK now. Yeah. You know, they've said how much it matters. And we know ourselves that local radio is hugely popular throughout Ireland. Yeah. And for the BBC to turn back now. But then again, what else is different? I mean, yeah. go right back to the awarding of the university to Coleraine. I just it should have been in Derry. I mean, yeah. every time. And the very bloody roads haven't properly been finished yet between yeah. Derry and Belfast. I mean, it was, simply was an effort to starve uh, Derry. And the way that I've listened to unionists here, certainly in the BBC here, and the way they dealt with it was, ah, the Derry ones, they're always whining about something. They're always uh, whining about something. Uh, so it was the old thing about blame the victim, don't uh, blame uh, us. Yeah, but Jude, if I, was, if I was Highland Radio, I'd open an office in Derry. <laughs> Actually, that's right. That would make a lot of sense. It really would. This is uh, their hour. Okay, Pat, this is our hour. Best, Time's up. Thank you very Time's much. Up. Good luck. We will talk again. again. Talk again. With God's help. Right? All the best. All the best. Look after Jude. yourself. You could get COVID if you're not careful. Okay? <laughs> exactly. Good luck. Okay.